Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Using Single B Technology to Develop Lead Antibody Molecules on GPCR Targets. This webinar is part of the sixth annual event in the Drug Discovery and Development Virtual Event Series. And I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Dima Biotech. For more information about Dima Biotech, please go to dimabio.com. Now let's get started. Before we begin, I wanna remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our new live chat feature during this presentation. You can find that live chat located on the left of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you want during this presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of this presentation. You will also notice that the sponsor has provided a survey located at the right of the abstract. This survey will be available during both the live session and the on-demand period. Now, if you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, simply click on the Help Desk button located at the top of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby. And finally, as a reminder, this presentation is educational and offers free continuing education credits. Click on the Continuing Education Credits link located at the Abstract tab from the menu at the left of your screen and follow the process to obtain those credits. I now present today's speaker, Dr. Dong Hui Ma, Dima Biotechnology LTD CEO. For a complete biography of all of our speakers, please visit the presenter tab from the menu at the left of your screen. Dr. Ma, welcome. You may now begin your presentation. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a very great pleasure for me to present uh, Dima Biotechs single B technology, and also how we utilize this technology to develop uh, lead antibody molecules on therapeutic uh, drug targets, especially on GPCR targets. I'm the CEO from Dima Biotech. I'm Dong Hui Ma. Dima Biotech is a biotechnology company uh, focused primarily on the heat to lead stage of antibody drug discovery. And in today's talk, uh, I will divide my talk into three sessions. The first session, I will disclose some of our technology uh, um, platforms, um, like a therapeutic lead antibody discovery, include uh, how we make functional proteins, use uh, DIM Pro, and uh, how we clone the IgG genes directly from B cells by using uh, DMAP, single B technology platform, and how we uh, utilize an memory display platform, D library for antibody engineering. On the second part of the uh, talk, I'm going to showcase one of the example, how we utilize uh, DMAS uh, discovery platform to de uh, develop a CAR T uh, T cell therapy uh, solution for multiple melanoma treatment. On the last part, and also most important part, we're going to show how DMA can help and enable biopharma companies to uh, discover and help them to uh, find the more lead antibody molecule to help them to push more quickly of their pipeline to clinical trials. This is our discovery procedure for therapeutic lead antibodies. In the first part, we'll make the best and the native uh, functional proteins as immunogen to immunize uh, animal. Then we build up a high super assay to find the best uh, leads, uh, heat. And then uh, we use our DMAP technology, single bead technology to clone the IgG gene. After ranking the, uh, the best uh, molecules, then we choose the lead for further optimization with our D library uh, technology. We can do a humanization, affinity maturation, or other, uh, even like uh, de-risk some of the amino acid, like a uh, uh, cysteine from the CDR region by using our D-library technology. Uh, in the next couple of slides, we're going to show uh, in detail how we utilize our uh, discovery platform for therapeutic lead antibody discovery 
uh, from the protein part to the antibody engineering side. For uh, functional proteins, especially for those uh, uh, therapeutic lead antibodies for antibody drug, uh, more than 90% of the drug targets, antibody drug targets, they are transmembrane protein. Uh, according to the complexity of their transmembrane domains, they can be divided into two groups of proteins, single transmembrane protein and the multi-transmembrane protein. For single transmembrane protein, the preparation, the well-established technologies, basically people use uh, the extracellular domain, the cut it out and fuse with the HIS or FC domain and express in the mammalian cell. So by this approach, they can mimic the native structure and a number of FDA approved drugs have been successfully developed by this approach. And for multi-transmembrane protein, there's a lot of challenges, especially the uh, multi-transmembrane domain, they are highly hydrophobic. They cannot uh, purify into high uh, purity in aqueous uh, solution. So they tend to form aggregate. So in the past, if people want to develop a high quality therapeutic antibodies, uh, most uh, of the time people use uh, whole cell immunization or whole cell ELISA to identify the best molecule. But uh, um, the problem is uh, when you immunize this uh, whole cell into an animal, some of the cytosolic protein and the nuclear protein also can be released to the animal body. And then they will also activate the immune response. They create a background antibodies. So they will create the issues. So DIMA, uh, to address these issues, uh, we uh, develop our own DIM Pro uh, different technology solutions like a VLP, virus-like particles, exosome, MMP uh, detergent solution approach or nanodisc uh, technology. In the next uh, couple of slides, I'm going to uh, exp uh, explain them, elucidate them into detail. This is our ECD um, fusion protein technology platform. Basically, uh, we, uh, we purify the protein from uh, HEK suspension uh, cell system. And after purify them, if uh, to ensure their function. So uh, if the protein has an uh, authentic native ligand or receptor, we also express the receptor ligand and uh, to a uh, in vitro binding assay to ensure their native uh, structure. If the particular target has an FDA approved or a clinical trial uh, antibody uh, drug, we will also synthesize the biosimilar drugs to bind to the antigen to ensure the native structure. Currently, we already made and validate more than 1,000 therapeutic target proteins in this, uh, by using this approach. For multi-transmembrane protein, uh, DIMA has uh, two major uh, category of uh, solutions. Uh, for the solution one, basically we uh, express the full length protein into a mammalian cell and we make uh, membrane uh, nanoparticles. In this nanoparticle uh, vesicle format, uh, they can be utilized for different assay, like ELISA or even flow varimetric assay. And for the um, for this group of uh, uh, technology, the first uh, technology we call the MMP, membrane nanoparticles. Uh, the the strategy is very simple. First, we express the full length transmembrane protein on the cell surface. Then we use a mechanical force to break the cell. Then separate the membrane fraction and the cytosolic and the nuclear fraction. Uh, uh, out. Then the membrane fraction will make um, a small uh, nanoparticles. So it can be used for the uh, downstream assay or immunization. So they won't have a contamination of the cytosolic protein and nuclear protein. The various like particle VLPs and the exosomes are the similar uh, technology. Um, the mechanisms are very similar. For VLP, basically we co-express our multi transmembrane protein with a uh, cap virus capsid protein like a GAG. So when the virus capsid protein press in, in the cell, so they tend to self-assemble uh, into a, a cell vesicles and then they, they will bud it out from cell surface. When they bud it out, the multi transmembrane protein will co-migrate uh, like out with these uh, nanoparticles. So by this way, you can produce um, the VLPs. Uh, the diameter of the VLPs normally uh, 150 uh, nanometer in diameter. 
exosome is a similar uh, approach. This is an example of um, this is an example of um, by using our MMP technology produced uh, nanoparticles. So uh, basically, uh, we create an uh, MMP uh, for a Claudine six, which is a four transmembrane domain protein. So after we made them, it can be utilized for um, ELISA on the left. Also can be used for flow cytometry. We, here we call the flow variometry analysis. From this data on the left, you can see more than 97% of the vesicles contain our target protein. So they are highly evenly distributed on the cell surface. Even though uh, this um, the solution one, a series of technology is a very um, highly uh, like, uh, uh, it's very good, but uh, there are also issues because uh, during purify these vesicles, some of the like uh, housekeeping gene on the cell membrane or from the uh, host cell, they are also co-purified. And when you immunize the animal, they also create the background antibodies. So, so the next step is, is how can we purify full length uh, membrane protein in native structure and also in highly purified uh, format? Uh, here we have a two, DIMA have uh, two different uh, techn technical solutions. The first is uh, uh, called a nanodisc, and the second is uh, a detergent solubilization approach. For detergent uh, approach, this has been decades old uh, technology. Basically, by screening different detergent, you can solubilize the membrane and also the uh, multi transmembrane protein by forming a micelle. Um, the problem with this detergent approach, so you cannot remove those detergents. When you remove them, the membrane protein tend to form aggregate and lost the function. So when you do use uh, the detergent containing um, proteins for life cell image, uh, for life cell acid, it will also kill the cell. The nanodisc technology is a new technology developed in around the 2000 in membrane research field. Uh, during 2000, the research scientists find uh, in the um, in the serum, there's uh, some of the uh, like a lipoprotein, they have a special feature. When they incubate with the um, uh, mammalian cell membrane, they can dissemble the membrane and form a small uh, disc. And this small disc normally is a five to 15 nanometer di in diameter. In the center, they have the lipid bilayer and also one transmembrane protein in the center. So you can use a chromatography to purify this protein. And also they are highly stable. So um, in DIMA, we utilize a uh, different technology for nanodisc preparation. We use a synthetic polymer, which is different from the, the traditional approach by using membrane scaffold protein, like uh, lip, uh, APOA1 or like uh, some of the LDL protein. Here's an example uh, of uh, uh, our technology versus uh, MSP nanodisc technology. You can see on the left side, we use uh, um, our technology prepared the uh, cloud in six. Um, on, on the SDS page, it's a highly um, like a homogeneous, a single band uh, purified and can be used for ELISA assay. On the right side, um, this uh, the figure I um, adapt from a JVC paper, they use uh, MSP. So basically, uh, you can purify the target protein, and also you can see uh, they carry out, uh, co-purify some large amount of this uh, scaffold protein, MSP. So when you use um, this technology for immunization, it will create also background uh, antibody against this as MSPs. But the, the benefit of our technology, we don't have this uh, like um, contaminant, uh, like a MMS, MSP proteins. And uh, even though um, Dima Biotech is an antibody company, we focus a lot on the, the protein, functional protein development, because we truly believe to get the best antibody, you need a best uh, functional protein as an immunogen for development. The next uh, couple of slides, I'm going to uh, disclose um, our technology on single B platform. 
um, for monoclonal antibody uh, development, there's uh, different uh, platforms, like uh, from traditional hybridoma, phage Easter display, to the most recent uh, cutting edge technology called a single B. Here's a uh, DMA Biotech uh, single B technology platform, our development process. First, we immunize the animal with the best uh, protein. When the animal gets a good immune response, then we will collect the PBMC and the spinocyte. And then we use uh, the purified target protein to do an enrichment to collect only those um, target B cells. Then we seed all these B cells uh, onto a 96 well plate. Each well, we only seed one cell. Then we cultivate this single B with our DMAS, the preparatory uh, single, uh, the B cell culture media. During seven to 14 days of the cultivation time, one B cell will uh, multiply and amplify from uh, one cell to 100 to 200 cell. And also they secrete the antibody into the culture media. After, uh, after assay analysis, like for example, ELISA or flow cytometer blocking or activation assay, we identify the positive clones. Now we clone the gene by PCR or next generation sequencing to further validate the protein, the um, antibody. And since our technology is highly effective in most of the case, we don't need uh, all the uh, B cells to do the screening. So uh, in most of cases, we only uh, take 120s or 140s of the total B cells in all collected uh, like a B cells uh, pool for one round of screening. In one round screening, in most of cases, we get uh, like a several hundred positive clones. For the rest of the B cell, we will store them in liquid hydrogen for future screening. So uh, in the future, if we need more clones, we can always retrieve those uh, like uh, liquid, uh, B cells from liquid hydrogen. After around the 30 days of uh, like uh, development process, we we'll get a new uh, clones. So this is the powerful uh, technology we call the B cell library uh, technology in the D libraries. Comparing to traditional hybridoma platform, our DMAPS has a, a lot of different advantage. The major two advantages, first, it is a high success rate. So during the past, uh, according to our experience, more than 300 targets, therapeutic targets, uh, thousands of molecules. Our success rate is more than 90%. And another uh, like uh, the advantage is uh, our development time is much shorter. It's only one half of the the hybridoma time. We only need uh, three to four months. This in also includes the uh, immunization uh, time. Right now uh, on the market, there's a number of uh, different uh, single B uh, cloning platform. What is the dif uh, difference between our platform versus uh, other platform? Here's a comparison. So uh, Beacon platform is a very popular uh, single B uh, cloning technology. And then this uh, technology developed by uh, Berkeley Light. Uh, basically, uh, the theory of or the mechanism of this uh, technology is very simple. They use a, a highly glorified, uh, sort of like a, a fax sorting machine. They can sort uh, thousands of uh, millions of uh, B cells, and then they disseminate these cells onto a glass slide. On this glass slide, uh, they create uh, like a thousand of uh, like small wells. For each well, they can hold uh, one cell and uh, also hold uh, several nanometers of uh, culture media with uh, detection reagents. After 24 hours of uh, incubation, this B cell will secrete antibody and also will react with the detection reagent. If they are positive, then they directly clone the gene uh, from this uh, single B cell by PCR or next generation sequencing. Uh, even though this technology is very uh, powerful and robust, but there's uh, two uh, challenges. The first challenge is on the assay part. So they only have uh, several nanometer uh, culture media, so they cannot do, do uh, like a traditional uh, assay, like a ELISA uh, flow cytometry. So they have to use a miniaturized assay to do the, uh, the analysis. Second challenge is uh, they got the CDA 
from a single B cell. So if there were any aerosol contamination, they will have issues. The same for the oil droplet platform, which I mean by uh, some of the company, uh, the difference is they don't use a glass slide, so they use uh, oil droplet to seal one cell. For DMAS, the technology is different. So basically after we see the one cell on the next cell plate, we cultivate the cell for uh, seven to 14 days. In this cultivation media, uh, we let the cell grow from one cell to 100 to 200 cells. So um, in the uh, one well of this uh, the culture circulatant, we get enough antibody to do traditional assay like ELISA or flow cytometry assay. And also the B cell number is 100 from one cell to 100 to 200 cells. So this perfectly avoids some of the issues with the other technology platform. Um, for the cloning um, part, since we already have 100 and 200 B cells as a CDN template, so we are more resistant to the aerosol contamination. So um, this is uh, our technology comparing to other uh, B cell, single B uh, tech cloning platform. On the next slide, I'm going to uh, show how after we identify the top lead, how we to do uh, optimization with our uh, antibody engineering platform, we call the D library, memory display platform. Other D library platform can do uh, multiple different uh, applications. Here we just showcase uh, how we use this technology platform to do antibody humanization. For D library to do antibody humanization is a, a little bit different from the traditional way. For most of the case, when Biofarm or other CRO company to do antibody humanization, what, what normally they do is uh, they use a computer aided uh, like uh, designing. They first uh, like modeling the three dimensional structure, then they do a little bit of like uh, back mutation to find the couple of like uh, potential by rational design, find a couple of potential good lead uh, for uh, humanization. For our approach, we use an experimental approach. First, we construct a human IgG germline framework library. So in this library, so we got uh, several hundred of uh, human IgG germline's uh, framework part. Then we graph the parental like from mouse or rabbit or from like a llama, so CDR region into this library. Then we express the library onto the cell surface or HUK293 cells. And then we use um, like the target protein to enrich this um, surface crest IgGs. After enrichment, we can find the better, the high affinity binders uh, by this using this day library approach. So by one screening, we can not only finish the humanization and also we can find the the best binder through this approach. Here's uh, one case. Uh, we develop an anti-BCMA rabbit uh, humanized molecule. So uh, from this data, you can see the parental antibodies already show very high binding affinity. In KD value is uh, 0.267 nano uh, more. But after several rounds of screening, we can identify a molecule, the best molecule to the picomore range. The affinity increase almost 18 folds. This is a, another case. So anti CEA CAM5 rabbit molecule antibody. After um, several rounds of uh, like a screening, we identify a molecule, the top molecule to picomore range, the affinity increase almost 19 fold. So uh, this is the, the beauty of uh, our technology for one application for humanization. Definitely our technology can also utilize for CDR uh, region, like for the affinity and maturation, and also for um, de-risk some of the amino acid like cysteine uh, to, uh, for like um, by um, saturated mutation approach. In the, um, in the past, I already uh, show uh, our development capacity and the next couple of slides, I'm going to showcase how we uh, utilize our DMAS uh, development uh, technology platform to develop an anti-GPRC5D CAR T cell therapy approach for multiple myeloma treatment. 
at the first stage uh, of the development, we use uh, our D, uh, D maps, find uh, nine uh, top lead molecules, and we did a humanization. After humanizing all, the, all these nine antibodies, we um, we try to mimic uh, in the CAR T uh, scenario. So we we construct into SCFV uh, like a structure, and we did an affinity ranking by facts. Um, from this data, you can see after facts uh, affinity evaluation, several of our molecule shows a much better binding uh, capability comparing to the reference molecule which is uh, Eureka's uh, molecule, March 109, which is in clinical trial. So the red arrow uh, showed uh, the reference molecule. And also um, we uh, did a uh, in vitro uh, tumor cell killing. From this uh, in vitro tumor cell killing uh, from the um, like high effector to tumor um, cell ratio versus the low ratio, you can see the red um, like an arrow indicator is a reference. Under the high, we can not, we don't see much difference, but at a low ratio, you can see several of our molecules exhibit much uh, uh, better uh, tumor cell killing ef uh, efficiency compared to the reference. So based on this data, we choose three molecules uh, push uh, forward for in vitro uh, assay data, or in vivo assay data on animal study. So this is the animal uh, data, uh, the animal survival data. So after graph, the tumor cells, uh, MM1.S is a multiple myeloma tumor cell onto mice. And then we infuse with the CAR-T construct. From this data, you can see after 93 days, uh, the red box labeled a group of mice there, they were still survived and they can still suppress the tumor cells. And um, to ensure to ensure this um, like a construct when they infuse, I mean, to the patient, to the treatment with the patient, they are targeted highly specific. They don't have off-target like a binding or killing effects. So we also did um, like a specificity on target cell evaluation. This is our data. Basically, uh, we first construct a car jacket with uh, the reference and also our three different uh, car construct, G05, 07, and the 09. And uh, we incubate our car jacket cell with the, with the like uh, different tumor cell line and also two of the healthy people's PBMC and to see whether this car jacket cell can only activate by the uh, GPRC5D uh, expression cells. From this data, you can see all these uh, different car construct shows uh, the specificity only towards uh, the GPRC5D expression uh, cells. They don't show off target uh, to the like PBMC normal people cell or to other tumor cells. So this is shows the specificity. And another interesting thing is that you can see our G07 shows a much stronger activation um, by incubate with a native tumor cell line, this uh, RPMI 8226 cell, and comparing to the reference. So we choose this cell, collaborate with a CAR T company um, in Guangzhou, in China. So right now, this project is in IIT clinical trial. In the past, I show uh, our technology platform and also showcase one example how we utilize this technology to develop an, like a, a preclinical candidate for clinical trial. So in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna show how DEMA can enable and how a biopharma company for the lead uh, antibody discovery. And what is uh, our uh, business solution different from other CRO companies? Basically, we provide the next day and a real risk solution for biopharma companies. For, uh, for, um, in the past, for a biopharm company, when they try to develop and lead a therapeutic uh, target, what they do is uh, they either use internal R&D team or CIO companies to develop a uh, lead antibody molecule. So um, for these two approach, uh, first you have to, uh, whether you use CIO or um, internal, they have to invest either equipment 
or pay shell company with a high upfront payment. After a couple of months of waiting, then uh, you will see whether it's a good result or bad result because for any biological project, there's a risk of a failure. So after several months, uh, if the project doesn't uh, go through well, and you both waste the money and also the time for the projects. So there's a lot of risk. DEMA, uh, we, what we do is a little bit different from this approach. Basically, we're thinking um, right now what we do is uh, we invest our own money to develop all this uh, like a therapy target lead molecule development. So we pre uh, and uh, develop all these targets on the lead molecules and put this uh, put this uh, molecule on shelf. So when the bio farm see our list our list of the targets, if they uh, have any interest on one of the targets, we can ship the antibody next day to the bio farm company. They can evaluate internal internally with their assay to whether the particular molecule uh, works for their assay. So by this way, and um, so basically it's a zero risk. So if it works, then we sign the uh, agreement on contract. So this can save a biofarm company at least eight months time in development time. And uh, um, so if a biofarm company need uh, more molecules, we also, we also have uh, liquid nitrogen stored B cells, which have been validated by like this lead molecule. So we can screen another round this only takes 30, uh, 30 days. Right now, we already uh, finished uh, up to uh, 250 druggable targets with thousands of uh, uh, lead molecules. So uh, you are welcome to uh, come to us and uh, uh, see whether there's uh, any targets uh, in your interest. Dima Biotech is a more um, biotech company focused on the products. So we already have uh, 250 druggable targets uh, available on shelf for the bio farm for lead molecules, a thousand of lead molecules. We also uh, provide uh, products for full length uh, multi transfer membrane protein, either in VLP, uh, MMP, or nano disk format. And uh, other products also uh, we can offer. So if you are interested, you can always go to DMA's uh, website, www.dmabio.com, to see whether you have any interest product for you. And if you have any question, you can, I mean, you can ask in the later session, or you can send an email to me uh, personally for to my email address, or you can call me. Uh, I'm Don Hui, uh, I'm finish today's talk. If you have any questions, I would like to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ma, for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of this webinar. If you have any questions you wanna ask, please do so now. Just click on that ask a question box located on the far left of your screen. So let's get started. It looks like we already have some questions coming in. Dr. Ma, comparing to other yeah. single bead cloning technologies available in the market, what are the special features and advantages to uh, Deem Ab platform? Yeah, for Deem Ab uh, technology platform, basically uh, the major uh, difference, um, there's a one, uh, so there are a couple of different technology platform, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, like uh, Beacon from Berkeley Light, and uh, you know another is, uh, uh, microfluidus uh, oil droplet technology platform. So our technology platform, the major difference it is that we do have a seven to like fourteen days uh, cultivation for the B the B cell initially we we seed it into a ninety six well plate. So we have our um, like our own developed uh, proprietary uh, technology for B cell cultivation media. So during this cultivation time. The B cell, uh, one cell will cultivate, I mean, amp amplify to 100, 200 cells. So um, we can do a regular assay like ELISA or FAX or blocking assay or even some activation assay using the circulatant. For Beacon and the other technology platform, they use a single cell to do this. So they only can provide um, like a several nanoliters. So those, um, 
like a regular assay, they cannot perform. So that's uh, one difference. Another thing is uh, we amplify the cell from one cell to 100 cells. So our like a cloning stage, we um, we get the IgG gene from this uh, 100 uh, like uh, B cells. And so are more, we are more resistant to the like aerosol uh, contamination during PCR or next gen sequencing. So that's um, two major difference comparing to other platform. Yeah. Thank you so much. You and so how much. can and how 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 work with Demobio to in license its Demab clones for therapeutic purposes? Yeah, um, our, uh, we uh, in the past we have been working with uh, a number of like um, you know uh, biofarm companies, and so um, you know for different biofarm companies and they have a different uh, like uh, needs. Um, we we are pretty flexible for the uh, business term, and we can you know uh, if some biofarm company they want like. Uh, work with us as a strategic partner. That's also, uh, we do have this uh, like um, uh, in the uh, partners in the past. And also we do have uh, biofarm companies uh, they want to like buy out like the uh, the IP for the clone. That's also workable for with us. And also uh, we do also have a biofarm company work with us. Uh, they pay us, uh, you know, kind of a milestone uh, payment uh, like uh, way. So that's also we do have a um, company working in this way. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I want to thank our audience for these great questions. Will Dima Bio offer standard products for multi transmembrane proteins in nano disk format? Uh, yes, we do offer. Um, so um, we do initiate our own like uh, product pipeline for this uh, nano disk, especially for. Um, like uh, GPCRs and uh, some of the like uh, iron channels. So um, currently we are offering more than 50, like uh, already uh, on shelf uh, purified uh, multi transmembrane multi proteins uh, to the uh, customer. Uh, we do also offer like um, uh, customized uh, products. If people do want uh, like produce um, multi transmembrane protein GPCRs um, for their own target, we can also provide a service for this. Yeah. Thank you so much. It looks like we have one more question coming in. What are the special features about Demo Bio's NanoDisc technology? Yeah, um, for the common, uh, like a traditional NanoDisc technology, which uh, were um, initially uh, developed in like uh, 2000 by uh, in like a memory, uh, membrane protein research field. People normally use uh, multi uh, membrane scaffold protein as uh, like a uh, like a help to form this uh, nano disk, uh, like a LDL or HDL. This uh, like ApoA1 protein to do this. So what do we do a little bit differently? Uh, we use an uh, synthetic um, polymer to uh, make this uh, nano disk. So um, because we use this uh, synthetic polymer, so when we use this nano disk for immunization or screening, so we we get less uh, background uh, like uh, signals because those uh, um, MSP, membrane scaffold protein, like ApoE1, they also can create uh, antibodies during immunization or create background during like uh, screening. So that's uh, quite a difference from uh, our uh, nano disk technology from the other uh, technology. So I do have an example in uh, in my presentation. There's a one slide that shows uh, our um, like uh, uh, purified protein is showing highly homogeneous uh, single band, and the other um, like MSP uh, technology for nano disk they have multiple bands. Yeah. Dr. Ma, I want to thank you for your presentation today. Would you like to provide any closing remarks to our audience before we go? Yeah, uh, thank you everybody to attend uh, today uh, Lab Roots as uh, this uh, presentation. I think it's a very good opportunity to share our technology, and also uh, we would help uh, also enable our customer, especially biopharma companies and uh, research institute scientists 
to uh, help them to develop a high quality monoclonal antibody for um, therapeutic tar target and also develop some like uh, technology for uh, new research. Yeah, thank you. Well, we want to thank you again and for your important research. And before we go, I want to thank our audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Dima Biotech, for sponsoring today's webinar. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information provided at the time of registration. And this webcast can be viewed on demand for two years until February 22nd, 2025. Labroots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.